that? Nice little black fin. Sick. Yeah. Alright, keep him keep him back there for now. Right. Kind of. Look what Sierra caught. Woo! Nice little black fin. Alright, ready to go to shore. Before we go to shore, we always have to take care of all the chores. We have to like put the mainsail halyard, take it off the mainsail, and, and then put the mainsail cover on, and then like wrap all the lines up and uh, just put the dinghy in the water. What other chores do we do? Fishing poles rinsed and away, everything. A little plane coming in. sushi here for appetizer. Our fresh blackfin tuna. Yummy, yummy. Look at this anchorage. We sailed around from Great Harbor Key over on like the west side and we sailed around the north side to the east side and we're tucked up, I don't know, where are we? Do you know where we are? Like Rat Keys. Fish Market Key. Fish Market Key. Keys. I don't know. Just these little empty keys around here. And there's one other sailboat anchored right in front of us. And this is, this is what we love. We don't like to be like in, I mean, Hopetown's pretty cool, right? Like, it yeah, was, we like meeting the people, yada, 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 but we like being on our own. <laughs> yeah, like, it, and Hopetown's a cool little town, nice to be there for a few days, but this is really what we like, just no one around and beautiful, desolate island with spear fishing and a beach right over here for Jetty, and it's awesome. We're gonna go do some spear fishing, but first we're gonna talk to you guys a little bit about spear fishing. In the Bahamas, spear guns are not allowed. In Florida, you can use a spear gun. A spear gun is like a, it's, a it's got a trigger. trigger. Yeah, so here we use one of two things, either a pole spear or a Hawaiian sling. Yeah. This is a pole spear. It is one piece and you bring the band up Watch as high as you can down. and then you release on your fish. It's making me nervous. A Hawaiian sling is two pieces. This is Hawaiian sling, so you have just a spear. The shaft. The shaft. And then you slide it into this piece. This is like a traditional one. The sling. And you so just slide it in there and you put the butt in here. And this one you can't really hold the whole time. Like this one you can kind of hold when you're swimming down to the bottom and chasing a fish and whatever. So this one you, when you're ready to shoot, you pull it back slow and you got to kind of hold the butt of the spear as you pull it back and then you let go and the shaft flies out. And since it's not attached, you got to either get a really good shot or be fast and get after the end of the shaft and grab it with the fish on it. Otherwise, if you got a bad shot and you got a big fish, this fish can take your spear. I have better aim with this one, but if I shoot and I miss, I don't know, it's hard for me to find that, so I spend so much time trying to find the shaft. And this is the same thing. Sierra got me this for my birthday or something. It's a fancy one. Just a fancy Hawaiian sling with a little handle, but same thing. You slide it in, cock it back, and then let go when you're ready. Hit a fish. So that's the gear we use here in the Bahamas, and we use mask snorkel that you're not allowed to scuba dive in spear fishing, and I would... Not do it anyways. Yeah, but in the States you are, and people do, and do they do it in Florida? 
at least in New York, I know some people do, and I guess in Florida, I don't know. I would never do it. These are the fins we use. They're super long fins. These are just plastic, kind of cheap ones. We both have plastic, but they make them out of carbon fiber and fiberglass, and they're super efficient. These things have lasted me like over 10 years now. They're awesome. Just a little more efficient than like short scuba diving fins. Gloves. Gloves are important. You can use like the cheapest gardening gloves, whatever. It doesn't really matter. These were free diet or these are spear fishing gloves, but they're like they have holes in them and whatever. But it doesn't matter. Like as long, I don't know. But if you need to stay down or look under something, you can grab it and not fear of grabbing a lying fish. And you can grab the fish and not worry about spines. We wear wetsuits because even though the water is relatively warm, we still get chilly when we're submerged for like an hour or two. And I even wear a hood a lot of the times. It's getting warmer now, so I probably won't wear a hood anymore. And a weight belt. And a weight belt to because our wetsuits make us float, so our weight belt allows us to we were enough weight where we're still floating at the surface but as we dive down our wetsuit compresses and we become neutrally buoyant at like 20 or 30 feet he's using what he learned in our free diving class that helps us kind of lay on the bottom and just kind of stay down without floating back up and then as we start to come up we're already starting to float and then where we go we kind of just look on the map and see if there's any like random coral heads or we'll just drive the dinghy out and look at the bottom and if it looks like there's something then and the rules around here are you have to be a mile off nasa and 200 yards off any family island so the islands that we're in here now are not considered family islands there's nobody on them so, so family island is an island with a residence on it we learned that in our other video we said something about like we weren't supposed to be within 200 yards of shore but that's only if there's a residence on that island here we're, we can go wherever, but lobster season just ended. It ended March, March 31st. 30, March 31st. So no more lobster, but we can still get conch and grouper, grouper season is still open. Hogfish is open. So they do have a closed season for NASA, or is it all grouper or all NASA? Grouper. All grouper. Usually, I think it changes uh, year to year. NASA. I don't know. December to February. I don't remember the exact beginning or end but it's definitely December through February. I think it's like December 1st through February 31st, but I think it changes year after year. So just, if you guys are going spearfishing the Bahamas, check on that. Groupers have to weigh at least three pounds. So like, we've gotten comments like, please don't, please don't spear grouper. I don't know if they're moral or like environmental concerns, like sustainability concerns. I think they are, because then they send us articles. And if you watch, you know us, we care about the environment and we won't take anything that's too small. We won't take more than we need. First of all, because we can't keep it. Second of all, because we don't want to kill fish we're not going to eat. Yeah, so we'll we'll spear for dinner, and then maybe we'll save one for a day or two, but we'll all eat it straight through so we know it's not going to go bad. And spear fishing is actually a very environmentally responsible way to fish because when you buy fish from fish markets or, or wherever, the food store fish markets, there's a ton of bycatch that go, and it depends what kind of fish they're fishing for and where they are and the bycatch. And, but bycatch is like when they're netting or long lining or whatever, however they're fishing for fish, bycatch is like all the extra stuff that they catch that they can't use or they're not allowed to keep. And, and that it just, dies. yeah, it just dies and they get thrown back in to the ocean. So spear fishing, you you dive, you find the fish you want, you look at it, you know if it's too big or too small, you get it, and then you eat it. It's not like you're killing anything extra. Yep, that's it. You're selective fishing. There's no bycatch. There's no tons of other fish that are going to go bad anyway if they're not bought or... But yeah, and that's pretty much what we, like, our meat when we are traveling the Bahamas is like, what, 80% seafood? Yeah. Yeah conch, lobster, fish that we spear. So that's how we eat. All right, we're going spear fishing. Let's go. So today, I think we're gonna be out there for a while. So, and it's hot. Jetty's going to stay on the boat, the big boat, with the fans on, with the windows and screen and the door is shut. Sorry, Jet. She doesn't know yet. She looks tired anyway. No, 
stay. Katie, look, we got some dinner for you. Hi. Look, Jets. What's in there? Dinner. Okay, we just got back from our spear fishing adventure today. And we went just on the other side of the island that we are anchored on now. And they had, the reefs were really lively. Lots of fish, mutton, snapper, a couple of grouper here and there, and a couple sharks. We got three hogs, Billy got two, I got one. There was a lot more we could have gotten, but the longer we were there, the more sharks we were seeing. So we figured we had plenty for dinner tonight and tomorrow, and we should come back and get Jetty Dog. This is three hog fish meat. That is our shark. How's it going? I think he wants to eat my feet. We're gonna go check out this little island over here because we haven't done that yet. Well, let's see what it's like. You do, don't you? You wanna swim in? You want me to pull you in? Salt. It's pure salt. The water must come up and then dry out and leaves all these little salt puddles. Jetty hates going by the waves, the waves breaking against the rocks. Where are you going over there? I don't know if that's a good way to go, Jets. come to a dead end, especially without sandals. Turning around. Look at this guy. I don't know. Oh, it's just a, it's just a moment. Whoa! This is malt. Looks like we might be getting a little weather tonight. The wind is supposed to switch hard from the west tomorrow, which is this direction. 
and there's some land way out there, some small islands over here, and there's nothing out this way except for shallow water. So it's kind of protection from the sh like shallow water breaks up big chop and everything, but not super protected. And we got some rocks over here on this side. The hard west wind's not supposed to come till tomorrow morning, so we should be all right, but it's already starting to switch southwest, so I put out another anchor out 90 degrees from this anchor just to just give us a little extra protection. Sierra's cooking an absolutely amazing dinner as always. What are you making? Oh, you're so nice. We are making blackened hogfish, fresh, like an hour old, with veggie quinoa and sweet potatoes. And brownies for it. Dessert. Dessert. Ooh, yummy. This is what we call sea to table. Ooh, the squall just hit us and we got, I don't know, probably 30, 35 knot winds. I'm so glad I put that second anchor out because the wind shifted at least 90 degrees. Um, so we're straight on that second anchor, which was set about 90 degrees out from the first one. Um, and we're holding all right. We got the Navionics in the background, just kind of watching our position, making sure we're not dragging as well as looking at the lights of the boat behind us, making sure we're not getting any closer to him. Are we dragging Sierra? Not yet. Well, there's lightning everywhere. This guy is like blowing up. It's pretty cool. I think this will pass. I, this squall will pass pretty quick, hopefully within an hour or so. It's already getting, the wind already feels a little lighter. What do you think? Yeah, but it keeps changing direction. So we'll definitely be awake the whole time this thing is going on. And what do you think, Jet? She thinks that her bathroom time got cut off because it got. Nasty. I know she's got to go to the beach. We will, we will. Once it calms down a second. You could always go on the trampoline, you know. watching as usual we have a huge favor to ask you guys one of our sponsors chasing a dream photography our friend Lori she also started a not for not-for-profit foundation that benefits kids with terminally ill diseases she raises money and then with the money she goes and buys them stuff that they really need to live a normal life uh, for example one girl she was working with, they just bought her a new computer so she can continue working for her degree. Another girl, she couldn't go to school anymore, so they got her this robot that put her picture in her seat at school, and she was literally with her classmates. She could raise the robot's hand, they could talk to her, she could ask them questions. So it was just like she was in class. Yeah, she's raising this money to buy kids stuff that it's gonna make their lives easier, even though they're living with d diseases that are life-threatening and not necessarily easier for lives but uh useful in their lives instead of maybe a one-time experience or or uh things like that things that that will really help them and all these kids are local as well they're kids in south florida maybe only in palm beach county but uh, uh local kids in south florida that are benefiting from this organization. Lori has teamed up with um, a local boat club, Jupiter Point Boat Club, and they have decided to raffle off a year's boat membership. So it's pretty much a free boat for the entire year. If you're a part of the boat club, they have over 30 boats you can choose from to take out for the day. It's a annual membership for this boat club where you can take out a boat and use for the day in the Jupiter air. You don't have to worry about maintenance, you don't have to worry about cleanup, you literally get the boat, go out for the day, bring it back. So that's the cool part about it. So if you guys are in the Jupiter area or Palm Beach County area or you just visit the area once in a while or Maybe you even have friends or relatives in the area. Consider buying one of these raffle tickets. It's one ticket for $25 or five for $100.
and uh, it's a pretty cool prize. I think I forget what the value is, like seventy five hundred dollars or yeah. something. So we'll link it below and just consider that and check out her website because if you go on her website, it shows you all the kids she's working with, all the stuff that they've done for the kids. So check her out. She's an awesome. She's one of our greatest friends. Yeah, Lori and Chasing the Dream Foundation is the foundation. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for coming along on the adventure with us. We'll see you guys next time.